each year in the United States. Thousands of major crimes go unsolved. When the case has gone cold and police have nowhere to turn, they seek assistance from the public. This is a program dedicated to solving these cases. This is Crime Stoppers Case Files. Welcome to Crime Stoppers, South Florida Case Files. I'm Dick Maston, the director of Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers. The purpose of this program is to share unsolved cases with as many South Florida viewers as possible, empowering you to do something about the violence on our streets. Every case we feature is unsolved. Every case we feature has a cash reward available. In other words, every case we feature is an opportunity for you to help your community and at the same time earn Crime Stoppers cash without even giving your name. Now let's get started. On October 28, 2007, Josebel Millares was closing up the Metro PCS cell phone store he managed at 36th Street and 17th Avenue when two armed killers robbed him of the store's cash and his life. Yo tengo, yo tengo cuatro, cuatro hijos. Bueno, tenía cuatro hijos con él. Él era el más chiquito, 28 años tenía. Todos éramos muy unidos, todos. We were really close. He was my youngest brother and he was just a great person, very humble. Yo siempre me llevé muy bien con él, tú sabes. Yo era su cuñada, soy su cuñada y siempre tuvimos buena relación. Era su familia era lo primero. Ah, muy cariñoso. Y conmigo era un hijo maravilloso. Nunca usó droga, nunca fumó, nunca tomaba. Tenía un millón de amigos. We met in this condominium where we used to all live. At the time I was 12. He was always in love with me, and I never really paid attention to him, and he would always pass by my window and make little noises so I could, you know, see that it was him passing by. Years passed on, we went on to high school. He would pick me up in the mornings and take me to school. He was my ride. He still always said that he was in love with me, and um, we went to prom together, which was a great experience, and um, Turned 16, he got me my first job at McDonald's. We worked there together. He never let me do anything of the nasty jobs. He used to make me my lunch at McDonald's. And years went on, he went on to the military. Él estuvo cuatro años en la marina. Well, he went into the military to be able to go to school. Um, while being there, he wanted to become a chef. Um, after that, he came back to Miami. He started working for this, um, this phone company. So he became the manager there, and um, he had a lot of friends. I mean, everybody just loved him. I always talked to him and told him to leave that place. That place was very bad. And he always told me, Mommy, I have a million friends there. He would tell her, no, nothing would happen to me because everybody loves me there. When he came back, we always stayed in contact. I found out his mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. That was a hard time for him, and I would always try to coach him through it. I was always a positive light for him. And then, unfortunately, his dad got ill. He would always call me, and um, we started like talking again. And at the day of his dad's funeral, I went, of course, right after work to be there as support, as a friend. Our relationship went on to another level. We started dating six months into my relationship with him. Just got pregnant. <laughs> and um, he was like, don't worry about it. You know, I'm gonna take care of you. Everything's gonna be fine. That's what he did. He always took care of me. And um, on October 26th, we went to get our ultrasound, which was my 16 weeks ultrasound. The tech, you know, she's like, okay, I'm gonna tell you the truth, the sex of the baby. And then she told us you know, we were having a baby boy. I thought that man was gonna like jump out of his skin. He put his hands in the air and he's so excited. He didn't even let me take the ultrasound pictures with me. He actually took it with him to show it off that he was having his, a baby boy. And then two days later, tragedy strikes. Y ya se acabó la, la familia. 
se destruyó la familia porque a los cinco meses de haber muerto mi esposo lo mataron a él Crime Stoppers is an international organization dedicated to bringing resolution to unsolved crimes. Members of the public work with police to make the world a safer place. Since 1975, thousands of Crime Stoppers organizations worldwide have helped make over one million arrests. Crime Stoppers acts as your advocate, keeping you anonymous and ensuring that your information gets to the right law enforcement agency. October 28th of 2007, I got a call from one of my uh, fellow investigators in the robbery unit saying that he had started handling uh, a robbery case. It was a, uh, it looked like it was a robbery, armed robbery that went bad. Uh, the victim had been shot as he was coming out of the Metro PCS store at uh, 3525 North of 17th Avenue in Miami. The detective was handling the case and as he was handling it, the victim was taken to Jackson Memorial Hospital. And while he was out there processing the scene and, and talking to or trying to find some witnesses, um, he learned that uh, he had died very shortly after being transported. The victim's name was Josbel Millares. He was a 28-year-old young man, father to be, former Marine. Unfortunately, this homicide happened on a, on a Sunday afternoon around 5.30, where most of the businesses in that shopping center were closed. There was a limited amount of witnesses. Él, cuando murió su papá, él no tenía que trabajar los domingos y empezó a trabajar en esa tienda los domingos para ganarse 60 miserables dólares que me los daba a mí para ayudarme después de la muerte de su papá. Fíjese si ese niño era bueno, que su día de descanso él lo dedicaba a eso, a ayudarme a mí, a mi, a mi hija que estaba estudiando. Jos Bell was coming out of the uh, store with two other employees who had stayed late with him. They were just talking about nothing, just hanging out with him, waiting for him to cash out. They accompanied him out the back door. Diez minutos antes, él me llamó por teléfono y me dijo, mami, ya voy para allá a llevarte tu dinerito. Eran las cinco menos diez cuando él me llamó. These two other employees had kind of like walked over to their cars were, which were parked near the, the back entrance of the store. And as uh, Josbel was pulling down the metal door to the uh, store, um, two uh, black male subjects kind of like almost ran up to him. One of them shot one time in the air, I guess sort of like to surprise him and let him know that, hey, we got guns, we mean business. Josbel had the, uh, a money pack. Being the weekend, it was one of those drop box type of envelopes that was sealed for the bank. And uh, he had it tucked away, and uh, they asked him for the money. Josbel complied and actually threw the money back onto the floor in front of the guys that was robbing him. And uh, for some unknown reason, um, he, he was shot. He was shot in the uh, upper torso area. He collapsed right there. One of the other assailants uh, picked up the money bag, and the other guy with a the gun, they ran off and got into like what some people say that looked like a, a brown small color vehicle and took off through the rear exit of the parking lot. Y a la media hora llamaron a mi hija y a él le habían dado dos, dos tiros en la espalda. Get the horrible call from his sister. Josbel just got shot. Don't worry, Claudia. Please don't get nervous, the baby. He was, he was still alive. So, I mean, we rushed over there. At one point, I remember driving to the hospital and saying, I'm going to tell him, you see, you should have never worked there. It was a bad area. No supe más cuando llegamos al hospital ya. A los cinco minutos nos dijeron que había muerto. Then I just hear his mom screaming, screams of murder. I've never heard anyone scream that way. I remember thinking, you know, this, this is not happening. I would have never, ever thought that this would happen to someone like him. And here I am, four years later, still crying, still in pain, still asking why. All of those lame sayings that you hear, the rug pulled out from underneath you. You're left out in the cold, naked. That's how I felt, abandoned, alone, not knowing what to do next, what direction to turn. I had this baby inside of me, growing, 
constant reminder, a beautiful reminder, but a constant reminder of the tragedy that we went through and we've all gone through. I think that the worst thing that could ever happen to somebody is to lose someone you love and not know why. On October 28, uh, 2007, Josbel Meares, who was a 28-year-old uh, manager of the Metro PCS store, was killed after a robbery gone bad as he was actually leaving the store on a Sunday afternoon. It was at 5.30 in the afternoon when he closed shop. These two guys just came up to him, asked him for the money, and although he complied and gave it to him, he was shot once, and a short time after, he died at the hospital as a result of that gunshot wound. As we worked the case, we found out through a, a confidential informant. I think he had either overheard some jail conversations where the two guys responsible for uh, Yosbel's murder may have been sitting in the parking lot for quite some time. One of them sat actually close by on an air conditioning unit that was about, I would say, 30 feet from the door and waited for him and signaled his accomplice to come and, and help him out. We kind of like suspected that something was really wrong because what are the chances that you're coming out the back door with a large amount of money? And, I'm, and it was a large amount of money. It was the whole weekend take for a total of eight stores. So all the managers would bring the money to that one main store where Yosbel would count it out, separate it, and deposit the money. So at that time, we said, there's something very, very bad about what's going on here. This was not a crime of opportunity. And we investigated more as a an inside job kind of homicide. Porque nadie iba a ir de afuera a saber que él traía dinero. Tiene que haber sido alguien de allí, de allí de ese lugar, donde él decía que él, ten, él me decía, mami, yo ahí yo tengo un millón de amigos, mami, nunca me van a hacer nada porque a mí todo el mundo me quiere. Uno de esos millones de amigos de él tienen que saber. You know, Jos Bell was a, a marine. He had just come back from a tour duty and uh, he survives the military, but a few months later ends up dead in the parking lot by some guy just being greedy and, and robbing him. Um, he had a baby on the way. He said, I'm going to have a baby, I'm going to have a baby, and everyone is happy. But, unfortunately, I can't know him. It's just one of these senseless things. And what makes it worse was that he gave him the money. So I don't know why they shot him. Being that that store is such a busy store, we went at it that it was either a customer who knew the in and outs and may have gotten together with someone, an employee or someone who pretty much watched them deposit this money every day at a certain time. This store has one of the most elaborate video surveillance systems I've ever seen. And Luck would have it, uh, a few days before there had been a rainstorm, lightning storm, and one of their cameras in the parking lot that catches the overall thing had been hit by lightning and that one was put out. And uh, we would have caught the whole murder on video, so to speak. We know what we know about the murder because one of the cameras from one of the other businesses caught the reactions of the two employees. And what got their attention was the actual first gunshot. They pretty much froze in their place for a second you don't see when Yos Bell gets murdered, but you do see one of the employees, which was a friend of his, ducking behind a car, because now he doesn't know if he's next. He's within feet of Yos Bell. The girl that was by her car, she just ran. This girl ran for about a block and a half. I remember images that I saw on TV when they were at the scene. All I see is his feet and his hand over. And I said, he's alive, he was alive, he was alive. Why didn't they save him? And you see one guy like, I want to help, but if I help, I'm going to get killed. And he's, you see him moving around, ducking like, not, what do I do? And they finally came back and they came to him and, and pretty much he was dying while they were there. And you can barely see the brown or dark colored car leaving the parking lot. But losing somebody as good as him and I think that what made it worse for me was that he was not only my boyfriend or my fiance at the time, or even the father of my son, was that he was my friend. He was my friend and I knew that he didn't deserve that, to die alone. It changed all of our lives. My family has never been the same. My mom 
She has never smiled the same. Yo tengo plan psiquiátrico. Mi mío no se me quita un segundo de mi mente. No he podido ver una foto de él desde que murió. I mean, I would give my whole life to have him back. But since we can't have him back, all we ask for is justice. Que ya yo quiero que el asesino de mi hijo ya, ya esté preso. Y que Dios lo perdone. Porque lo que es yo nunca en la vida lo voy a perdonar. Nunca. Sometimes there's just some people who are good people. And uh, this is one of those cases that has remained with me even though I'm no longer in homicide. It's just one of these cases that I continue to work and just gets to me because this shouldn't have happened. I'm asking for anybody who watches this to uh, help us out with whatever information they can. There was uh, two black males. They were unfortunately what we call average height. The description was very general because these guys faced Yo's Bell all the time as they shot him and they ran pretty much covering themselves through the cars in the parking lot. This is a, a young man who did everything right. This guy served his country. This guy was a father to be. This is Jos Bell Miares, our beautiful son, um, the image of his father, my constant reminder which is a beautiful reminder. I think he's the biggest gift I've ever been given. And I'm happy that he was able to survive my horrible tragedy during that time. So this is my baby boy, our baby boy. Welcome back to Crime Stoppers, South Florida Case Files. I'm Dick Maston. It's been proven that programs such as ours solve crimes after several airings of a case. With that in mind, we'd like to quickly review a few cases that we've featured on past episodes. On June 10th, 2010, at approximately 11.15 p.m., Miami Gardens Police Department officials responded to 17130 Northwest 9th Place, reference of black male who was shot. Upon arrival, units along with fire rescue here in Miami-Dade County found a black male by the name of Vincent James McCoy in the southwest bedroom, deceased. During the investigation, it was learned that Mr. Vincent James McCoy was visiting friends at the residence located in Miami Gardens. They were watching a basketball game that was televised that evening. At some point during the evening, a phone call was made and Mr. McCoy got up. As Mr. McCoy got up from where he was watching the, the basketball game, he approached the front door. And at that time, three shots rang out, and one of those three shots struck Mr. McCoy in the chest. And individuals then fled the residence along with other individuals who were outside. After sustaining that gunshot wound to the chest, Mr. McCoy stumbled throughout the residence and ended up collapsing in a rear bedroom. Mr. McCoy was pronounced deceased on the scene by Miami-Dade Fire Rescue. It was learned through the investigation that two black males wearing some type of sports apparel, possibly football jerseys, approached the residence and one of those black males fired three rounds into the front door. The black males after firing the rounds then fled on foot in an unknown direction. If anyone has any additional information, please contact the Miami Gardens Police Department. Crime Stoppers of Miami-Dade has one goal, to make the streets safer for law-abiding citizens by solving cases and capturing criminals. Now I'm Dick Maston. Be sure to join us next week for another episode of Crime Stoppers Case Files. <laughs>